Hey friends, in this lecture what I'll try to do basically is understanding the distribution of shear stress across a cross section of the beam. Now we have dealt with pure bending and then bending stresses. Essentially the concept of pure bending was that in a region of the beam if there is no shear force then essentially the bending moment is constant and if we took an element from that region of the beam we derived the bending stresses which were essentially nothing but sigma y which is equal to m y by i so stress at a point at a distance y from the neutral axis the neutral axis being that axis where there is no deformation taking place because there is no stress at that axis is directly proportional to the distance of the point from the neutral axis. This is what we have from the previous lectures. Now the whole concept of pure bending is some kind of a one case concept, right? So here we will, cons in, in case of the derivation of shear stress across the cross section of the beam, we will take a general example of bending wherein bending moment changes across every cross section and essentially as such the shear force is not zero. So we will take this example and see whether we can find the shear stress distribution over a cross section. Let us proceed. For example, I have this beam with me and this is suppose my reactions and it's loaded by free forces like this. Now I cut a section of the beam like this, right? So essentially, if I represent it as a free body diagram here, it will be like this, wherein these two are the forces, and this at the at this section, there will be two internal forces, Vx, which represents the shear force, and Mx, which represents the bending moment. Now, as we have seen that the bending moment is nothing but a couple that is created due to the bending stresses acting at every cross section. So essentially the shear force is the resultant of the shear stresses that are created at every cross section. And in this lecture we will try to find the distribution of the shear stresses across a cross section. Now let us take, for example this is suppose then AB, right. Now let us take an element like this suppose, let us take an element of this and suppose I cut this plane by, suppose this is M, N and this is P, Q and the distance between M, N and P, Q is T, X. Let us magnify this region and draw it here now. This suppose is my M, N and this suppose is my P, Q. And it's acted by normal bending, so M, and here I have M plus Tm. Right. Now, it's acted by three kinds of forces, basically. Right. This one is acted by three kinds of forces in the x direction. If we take the x direction, it will be acted by three kinds of forces. Number one, there will be bending stresses at PQ. Number two, there will be bending stresses at MN. And there will be certain horizontal shear stress cropping up at MP. As we have seen earlier, there are two types of shear stresses basically. Number one, you have the transverse shear forces that are like this. And number two, you have the horizontal shear forces like this. Right. In this case, we will ignore this, tran this, trans uh, this transverse shear forces as we will consider equilibrium about the x direction. Right. So essentially, if this is my neutral axis and suppose this is the beam, then if I consider this block, which is nothing but is given as O, O dash, suppose, if I consider this block, then I got to find the equilibrium, then I got to relate the equilibrium in terms of this block, O, N, Q O dash. Now I magnify this block and bring it here now. Then this block will look some kind of a thing like this. Wherein this is only the shaded portion, right? Wherein this is my neutral axis, 
and the distance of the neutral axis from the block is nothing but is equal to y1 first of all. Now I, we got to draw the normal stresses first of all and at this age the normal stress distribution will be some kind of a thing like this wherein sorry it will be all tensile right the normal stress distribution will be all tensile so essentially it will be having an arrow in this direction and in this phase also there will be a normal stress distribution and it will have an arrow in this direction this comes because we know that if we have to have the stresses it will be some kind of a thing like this because it's sagging here so essentially what I'm going to do here is take this stress distribution out and draw it represent it here now we have shear stresses also cropping up and that are given by tau now this length is called P and this is nothing but this is equal to dx now let us take an elemental area of dA so this is dy and this is an of elemental area dA this is of elemental area dA right and now we have the conditions to consider equilibrium of this block right now we are in a position to write the equilibrium equation and that will write next this is my neutral axis right suppose now sigma y that is the stress acting on this elemental area is sig so sigma y is the stress acting at a point y from the neutral axis is given as my by i and sigma y into dA is a stress acting on the elemental area and that is given by this right and integration of this integration of this will give me the stress the normal stress acting on this edge of the block or this edge of the block so essentially this is my f now this it has normal force acting in this direction right so f dash minus f must be equal to tau into b into dx now f dash is nothing but is equal to sigma y dash into dA integrated and f dash where f dash is the force acting along this plane that is o o dash i i dash suppose and this will be sigma y into dA and this is equal to nothing but tau into b into dx in the next step what I am going to do is I am going to substitute sigma y dash as m plus dm by i into y as m plus dm is the bending moment acting at this phase and m is the bend, was bending moment acting at this phase so essentially sigma y dash is nothing but m plus dm by i into y into dA minus m by i into y into dA or tau into b into dx so if I take this equation and write it here it will be some kind of a thing like dm by i to y into dA into tau into b into dx or this is dm by dx i b by 1 into y dA is equal to tau or v by i b and this y dA is y dA is equal to tau and this y dA is nothing but is equal to q which is nothing again by the stat but the statical moment right statical moment q is the statical moment and q refers to basically suppose this is my dA right this is my dA this elemental area is my dA into y is the distance from the neutral axis so it basically refers to the to the moment of the area of this plane o o dash i dash i about the neutral axis 
the integration of yda basically denotes the movement of this area that is the say shaded portion to the neutral axis right so essentially therefore tau is nothing but is equal to vq by i b in the next lecture i will try to find out what's q and i will try to take the concept forward thanks a lot for listening thank you